Hello and welcome to this Australian Biocommons webinar. I'm Melissa Burke and I'm the Training and Communications Officer with Australian Biocommons. I will also be your host for today. In these webinars, we aim to share useful information about the latest digital techniques, data and tools available to the Australian life sciences community. Each month, we hear from our national and international peers on a bioinformatics topic that we hope will help you achieve your best medical, environmental or agricultural research. You can keep up to date with the latest BioCommons news and events through the channels that you can see on the bottom of your screen. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. In my case, in Brisbane, this is the Turrbal and Yogara people. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. And we recognize their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. In today's webinar, we're going to hear about BioTools and EDEM. Part of the BioCommons mission is to enable life science research communities to access and use digital infrastructure. One of the ways in which we're working towards this is by boosting the discoverability of bioinformatics tools and workflows through our tool finder and workflow finder services. And we've been working very closely with the BioTools and EDEM teams in order to achieve this. Today, we're thrilled to welcome two members of the Elixir team. We have uh, Hans Janeskescu from the University of Denmark and Elixir Denmark, as well as Matush Kalash from the University of Bergen and Elixir Norway. And they are going to share their experiences in developing and maintaining both BioTools and EDEM and how these two things combine to make it easier to find, understand, and cite biological tools and software. Welcome to the webinar, Hans and Matush. I'm now going to hand over to you to tell us all about BioTools and EDEM. Thank you very much, Melissa. Yeah, hello everyone. Thanks for following this webinar and thanks the organizers to giving us, for giving us the opportunity to present. It's uh, very nice to get up early in the morning and have this opportunity. Much easier than traveling to Australia. So it's very nice that we can talk to you this way. So we are going to talk with Hans and I will start with the motivation. So just uh, one example. Now this, uh, this screenshot is from BioCatalog, which um, was a registry of life scientific web services back in the day. And in 2014, when um, I tried to search for some tool, this is what happened. So let's imagine that I, I wanted to try to search for sequence similarity search within protein domains. And I wasn't sure what the phrase to type in the search what would be. So if I type sequence similarity search protein domains, it would return zero results. Although there actually were some tools doing exactly that. So what we maybe would want to have an opportunity to do instead would be to have some defined categories or some kind of terminology where we could maybe pick from the terminology or have some kind of autocomplete and then maybe dive into details, find that we would like to have something like sequence database search by sequence as a search phrase. And then further um, refine the search, maybe by saying that we would like something like protein classification or protein domains or protein families in this example. So to sum up the sum up this short example, we need an ontology to describe what tools do in scientific terms. And then we, of course, need a comprehensive registry of tools that would have all the information and possibly ideally all the tools that we need in life sciences. So the first part about needing the ontology. So for that, we have developed EDAM, which is the ontology of data analysis, modeling, simulation, and data management. 
mostly within life sciences, but also extending to other sciences as well. Uh, the main link maybe to start reading about EDAM is it's a GitHub repository. There are some, some other websites as well. Um, EDAM has been work of a large global community, maybe with some bias in Europe because of the Elixir and uh, some other projects that were preceding Elixir Europe, but it really has become a, a global community in the recent years. So what is IDAM? IDAM consists of around 3,500 concepts in data analysis and data management at the moment, and this is growing. And now on the background, this is only for illustration. There are some, some of the terms that represent the, the concepts in IDAM. And then these come in addition with definitions of those terms. They have some relations between each other and they might have a lot of synonyms so that each concept can actually include a lot of different terms, which are either exact synonyms or somehow related to each other. And uh, EDAM is divided into four main sections. So <clears throat> this one on the top left is topic. So topics are if you think about tools, this uh, could be like application domains of a tool, or there can be some domains of sciences. So, for example, phylogenetics can be a topic in EDAM, or electron cryotomography, which is then a methodology that produces data. So those would be topics. Then on the top right, there are operations. So operations are very concrete things which are done with data. So if some data comes in, some operation is done with it, either by software or manually or in combination, and then some data goes out. And those operations can be something like image segmentation or molecular docking or sequence alignment construction and so on. Then on the bottom left, we have uh, data. Data can be some very simple data like gene ID, which is a kind of identifier. Identifiers are also kind of data. Or another example here on the slide is position specific scoring metrics, which is a representation of multiple sequence alignment or sequence motif. If you want. Um, <clears throat> then on the bottom right, there is format. So format is a very concrete way of how data is formatted in a computer memory or, or a file. And these are really the well-defined formats like FASTQ or SBML, the Systems Biology Markup Language, and many others. There are some relations defined between this, uh, the concepts in EDAM and between these main four sections. So if I start on the left with operation, so operation can have a topic which then is some topic in EDAM. Then in the middle data can also have some topic. And operations have inputs and outputs, which then are some data. Then on the bottom left, there is a format. And format is always format of some kind of data. And the last but not least, on the bottom right, there is identifier and identifier is a special kind of data. So that's why there's this arrow showing that identifier is a data. And the identifiers might be identifiers of some other data or other entities, not on only data, of course. Now, what the usage areas of EDAM are. So first of all, as um, I briefly exemplified in the motivation example, uh, EDAM should be able to help when we are searching for tools, for workflows, possibly learning materials or any other research outputs or digital research objects in general. And this is really the main use case that was kind of steering the development of EDAM since the beginning. But in addition, EDAM is also useful for data provenance. So when recording metadata about 
what has happened to the data before like if, if it's especially if it's some processed uh, analyzed data we might want to say in which ways the data was processed before or in which format it is recorded another use case is for tools and data integration so to find out which tools match each other depending on what inputs outputs they have in what formats do they make sense in a workflow together so the description using EDAM can help with that as well. Then as any ontology, EDAM can be used for text mining. And last but not least, for choosing terminology. And <clears throat> we've had a lot of positive feedback from scientists when, for example, a biologist who is writing an article about their biological findings and then they need to write a method section which is about the image analysis that they have done but they're not experts in image analysis themselves so to find the the best matching terms to use to describe that they would have used edam and be happy with that so in addition to the main edam we let communities work on edam extensions so this is about enabling the com communities to develop EDAM towards the needs within their domains. And two examples are, one is EDAM bioimaging, um, which uh, includes the concepts related mostly to analysis of biological images, but actually most of EDAM bioimaging is just generic about image processing and image analysis, not necessarily specific to life sciences. And another example is for geosciences and interdisciplinary applications. So this is EDAM Geo that we started developing last year with a growing community. And this is to enable applications uh, where both biological and geographical data need to be used and also some, some other generic interdisciplinary sciences and science-based applications. Worth mentioning is that part of bio, EDAM bioimaging is also um, all the, the concepts related to machine learning and especially deep learning, as deep learning comes from the image analysis domain. So it was making a lot of sense that it was the, the image analysis community that helped developing that part of EDAM as well. In um, in the long term, these EDAM extensions are going to be merged into the main EDAM, but this is not the case yet for EDAM Bioimaging and EDAM Geo, but this is going to happen soon. So example with the EDAM Bioimaging, this is a snapshot of a poster that we presented in 2020, just before the first COVID lockdown, with a lot of authors, mostly from Europe and some from North and South America. Uh, an example of um, you know, EDAM bioimaging being useful for uh, data provenance is uh, mentioned in this white paper about recommending metadata for biological images, where there is some more information. I will not go into much details, but the, this table that you probably cannot read on Zoom um, lists the different kind of metadata that needs to be recorded for biological images. And then in the last column, it would say what kind of ontologies can be used for that. And then EDAM bioimaging is useful in, in quite many of those fields. So in general, EDAM became quite a ubiquitous component of numerous resources used for those different use cases, such as searching for research outputs and digital research objects in general, or helping with interoperability or with data provenance. And Hans will be talking about biotools for the rest of uh, this webinar. And then maybe some examples to mention is also the Elixir test, which is the training portal, listing training materials and training events, where also search by EDAM ontology is enabled. Then fair sharing, which is the registry of standards, databases, and related policies. So mostly metadata standards, information standards, where also EDAM is one of the many ontologies used uh, there to describe the different standards. The common workflow language 
for describing workflows, and many others such as Galaxy, where it is possible now to search for tools uh, or search tools in Galaxy using EDAM ontology. Maybe worth mentioning are some applications of the EDAM bioimaging extension. So on the bottom left, there is BIIII or B, which is the Biomage Informatics Index. That is a registry of bioimage analysis software, workflows and training materials. And then bioimage.io is a relatively new effort um, for um, recording and making accessible um, deep learning models for bioimage analysis. And then RAMB down here is uh, the standard for uh, metadata for biological images. So by this, this I would give over to Hans for the second part, where we need a comprehensive registry of tools, getting back to my motivation. Yes, so I'll be talking about uh, the BioTools registry. Uh, first, a little bit of a motivation. I'm looking this way. This is where my screen is. Um, in the past, and of course, these days, there's a lot of output coming from the research community in terms of tools and databases. And uh, in the past, these tools were quite fragmented and poorly documented. And there was, there was a hard time getting to access them and finding them. And the way they were being described wasn't in any formal and uh, in integratable way. Uh, the, these tools might come up, they would get published, stay up for a few years, and then maybe the PhD or whoever published them, they would move to their next step in their career and then uh, the tools would go away. This is still the case these days, but and we're trying to kind of solve it in some ways. But uh, yeah, the tool will go away, and then that was it. You wouldn't find it anymore, and, uh, and there was no support for it. And all of this would make uh, the reproducibility quite hard. So the, so the outcome or the goal was to create a registry or portal, or database, whatever you would like to call it, of, for these uh, bioscientific software tools that will, will group these uh, tools together and make them uh, more accessible and findable to, to the community. Of course, there were uh, initiatives in the past and there are other registries today. Examples include uh, the famous MBOSS and BioCatalog and Sec Answers. There were uh, registries, commercial registries like Omics tools that are no longer available. Uh, there are, of course, uh, some dedicated uh, registries like Bioconductor towards uh, uh, R packages or Debian Med and, uh, and so on. And uh, yet another registry was created in the context of, uh, Elixir, of the Elixir Euro project. It's called BioTools or Bio.Tools, depending how you like to pronounce it. Uh, BioTools uh, tries to provide a comprehensive registry of uh, software and data services that are meant uh, for scientists to allow them to find, understand, utilize, and cite their, their resources. Uh, it contains from uh, simple command line tools and services all the way up to complex multifunctional analysis workflow. So anything that would perform some task is more or less okay for BioTools. And just a mention here is that BioTools contains tool descriptions or annotations, information, rather than not the actual tools themselves. So if you would like to download things or run things, that would be done outside of BioTools. And there are initiatives to do that and integrate in the future. Uh, we can find that at this uh, URL, HTTP bio.tools. Uh, the BioTools principles, I'm listing a few of them here. So it's open data and open source under uh, under open licenses, both the data and the source code. It's built by the community. Uh, we have over 5,000 uh, contributors, users currently uh, and answering the question before or helping with the issue that I mentioned before. We try to provide persistent IDs once a tool gets added to BioTools and it's been verified by, by a curator, uh, usually by, yeah, by a human 
we, we, we give it a unique persistent human readable ID, which will not go away. So this is exactly the point. If, if some tool gets published somewhere and then loses support then, or the website is gone, at least you, you know you, you have the annotation. Perhaps the links won't work, uh, but at least you have the annotation of the tool and you would know what it, would, it did when it was available. Um, another principle is about standard semantics, which relates to the scientific function of the resources and bio tools. Uh, which uh, these uh, scientific resources use the Lidam ontology, and we'll see in which way, but uh, it includes most of the concepts that Matush uh, presented. Uh, standard syntax refers to the model behind the, and the attributes behind the biotools uh, resources. There are over 50 uh, key scientific, technical, and administrative attributes among which, or from which, only four are required for a tool to get into Biotool, so the entry uh, barrier is quite low. It's community driven and backed by Elixir, which hopefully means that Biotools will remain free, open, and maintained uh, in the long term. I just added here some, some quick stats. Uh, we have over 25,000 tool annotations currently as of yesterday. Uh, there are over 400,000 tool, uh, sorry, tool entries, I want to say, and then there are over 400,000 tool annotations or properties in total, among which one over 150,000 are EDAM. There are over 5,000 users and uh, over 55,000 average monthly visits in uh, at least in 2022. So these are always growing compared to last year when the average was around 20, 35, 40,000. So this is a good thing to see, but for this year, are around the 55,000. Uh, coming back to the data model uh, behind Biotools, it's called Biotool Schema. And uh, it's the, 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 the information model that, uh, that, that defines the software, that describes the software tools. It is machine readable and human understandable. Initially, it was built in XML. Oh, sorry. It was built in XML, and now we're moving towards uh, JSON. It contains uh, control vocabularies, uh, ontology uh, terms such as EDAM. It, uh, it's a community defined standard version three and it's compatible with other initiatives. And here I list a, a, a link to the Biotool schema paper. So coming or describing it a little bit more, these are some of the attributes that are present uh, in Biotool Schema, which are used, of course, attributes to describe the tools in Biotools. The required one are quite easy. It's just a name, a Biotools ID, a, a description of your tool, and the, the homepage, and that's it. You can just save, and afterwards, you can be done, although we would like you to add a little bit more. Other, other information include uh, a tool type, which is how you interact with the tool, so uh, something like a command line tool, or is it a web tool? Or a desktop application and so on. Operating system, licenses, programming languages, costs, publications, all sorts of links, credits, and, and, and more. And for each of these tool, sorry, for each of these attributes, at, at the time of editing or adding the tool, you will have uh, links towards specific curation guidelines per very, very granular curation guidelines for each of these properties. To, to see exactly uh, what you should add if, it, if it's not uh, clear from, uh, from, from the interface. Uh, moving towards EDAM, I'd like to talk a little bit about EDAM in, in Biotools. It's, it's, I mean, Matthew summarized, Matthew described it quite well, so I don't have a lot here, but uh, coming to the four branches of the EDAM topics in Biotools are, are uh, seen as some sort of very general scientific and technical domain. We use it more as a, as a, as a label, and we'll see why I say that compared to the other three. Uh, examples can include transcription factors and regulatory sites, genomics, gene regulation, and the other three, the operation data and formats, similar to what Matos presented, they are, they are uh, defined in biotools in, uh, in the context of a function. So a function is a triple, in Biotools that has an input, 
that input is processed by uh, that input is defined by uh, EDAM data that has a specific uh, format. In this case, the input is the input data type is a transcription factor name in some textual format. This input is processed by uh, is, is processed by an operation. In this case, it's just a simple database search and it's related to the EDAM uh, operation branch. And the output is similar to the input, uh, con consists of a data type and the, and the format. Here is just a profile ID in JSON, CSV, and, and YAML. And uh, these are the four main branches of EDAM, and this is how they're represented in BioTools. And of course, we see this that the, the EDAM of the, or the function that consists out of these three uh, branches are quite, high to, hard, quite hard to annotate because of usually because of poor documentation and uh, yeah, interfaces play a role into it. We're working on making better interfaces in BioTools to allow users to, to have an easier time finding the, the right concepts for, for their tools. Uh, a quick example of how EDAM looks. This is how it looks in BioTools. It has a hierarchical structure. These are examples of topics and operations. You can also browse EDAM of, uh, in, uh, in BioPortal or in a really nice uh, EDAM browser created by the EDAM people. Uh, as an example of collaboration with other projects, I've listed here some of them, uh, Australian Biocommons, EDAM, Debian Med, uh, and others uh, that are within Elixir, such as the Elixir Training Portal, Fair Sharing, your PMC scientific communities and outside of uh, Elixir, such as the MathWorks, uh, the people behind MATLAB, they've reached us and that was quite nice. Um, so I will focus on the title of the presentation about finding things, finding tools in BioTools. And the way I would see it is you would have four main ways, so to speak. You either can find tools by just searching for things in the search box, and we'll see how that works. You can browse, uh, so you can browse specific things. So these are all kind of angles how to uh, approach the data. There are 25,000 tools, and I, I think that's quite a lot. It's getting harder and harder to find meaningful things, and we're trying to present different views so that it's easier to, for, for users to, to find the right tools. So you can search, you can browse, uh, you can browse by popular scientific concepts, in this case coming from EDAM. You can use, you can start from uh, BioTools domains and we'll see what those are. And also from uh, BioTools from communities and BioTools that have added their tools. The, the last were quite similar. So when you're, when you're, yeah, when you're looking for tools, you just start typing what you're looking for. And an example of this is, uh, yeah, from the even from the main page or anywhere you can start typing and we have this faceted search in which you can you in which you can search for a specific property so in this case we're searching for a tool that has a sequence alignment operation we need some fast fast a input and uh, you haven't seen it in my nice gif here the the the, the last thing was a cost of uh, we want it to be free so we didn't want to pay for it so, and you can keep typing this and once you're ready, you can just search. And once, you're, once you've searched, you get a, you get a search result. And uh, in this search result, we present just uh, a, a, a summary of each of these tools. We show some uh, EDAM information here, some license information, some operating system and description and name, of course. And, uh, you can sort them based on specific criteria. And even more from this, uh, from the search page, you can keep on refining your search. In this case, uh, maybe you would like to have a tool type of command line where you only care about command line tools and other, and you will keep refining your, your search as you are seeing the results. So it's up to the user how, how they want to, how they want to do this. Uh, here I also added some information about uh, the uh, of other other search uh, options. So the ones that you see here when you're typing are just a few of them. We support all fifty or more than fifty properties via our uh, 
our biotools, but we couldn't really include them just yet in all of this small list here because it would get quite cluttered. We're working on having a, a, a so-called admin searching or a more advanced searching uh, interface where this would be included. But in the meantime, all of all of uh, these uh, properties can be used. They're, they're listed in our API references. And anything you can search, of course, anything you can do in the regular interface in BioTools, you can do via an API. So uh, you can add things automatically or change things or so on. You can add tools and search for them and, and so on. Uh, there's, uh, there are two ways of searching uh, via these properties. There are, there's a coded search that works by default when you click on one of these, uh, one of these search uh, suggestions. Or which is a bit more specific, a bit more restricted, and there's usually the other one that is uh, a bit more loose. You get more results, and by if you navigate towards uh, the the end of the result set, the, the, they are probably quite uh, not so relevant by the end. But uh, it's good to see that uh, perhaps they're interested in some other way. Uh, so once you found one of your tools, you can click on one of them and then you see this is an example of a tool card. Uh, it, it summarizes the tool information that is present for a specific tool in BioTools, just a name, a, a homepage, the description, the, the triple that I mentioned in terms of the dumb functions, uh, uh, input, uh, operation, output, information about maturity, cost, accessibility, uh, tool types, operating system, and so on, credits and publication information. Most of these things are clickable to, to get you to other tools. You can click uh, EDAM terms and see tools that are related to this, uh, to this EDAM concepts. And we're working on having also uh, su suggesting similar tools based on, on a specific tool. So somewhere in the bottom, maybe you'll see top five tools that are similar to this. So yeah, this is how... Uh, a tool card looks, you can click around and find some information. All of this uh, can also be edited by people. We'll see how, hopefully later, if I'm not going too, too long. Uh, another way of uh, finding things is by browsing the popular concepts. So we've selected a number of popular EDAM concepts uh, that, are quite, that are present quite a lot in, in BioTools. We've grouped them up and we've them on the on our home page so if you scroll down here you can see there are these genetic groups that uh, that show some uh, uh, examples so all, all of these are edam topics or annotations related to specific areas of bioinformatics such as structure analysis omics and you can click on any of these to actually um, get to a list of tools that uh, that are annotated with these so here i'm just clicking on the machine learning and having a, a number of tools so these are just the popular ones. Of course, they're not all of them. And uh, in the future, we'll have a more comprehensive way of browsing EDAM in, in its form, in its hierarchical structure. So you'll go deeper and deeper towards the EDAM, more specialized concepts. And you, at any point, you can decide, OK, this is, this is the concept I want. Let me see the tools. Or I would like to navigate more and uh, see what other concepts are, are there are. Uh, the third thing, the third way in which you could find the uh, tools and biotools are via these biotools domains. A biotools domain is just uh, basically just a set of tools that are related in some way. I call it a slice of the biotools content. This is this was needed, of course, as as the content grew. Uh, it's quite hard to search within twenty five thousand tools where you, when you could be searching within maybe a hundred tools that are similar in some way. So these examples of these collections or these sets of tools include just tools from a research institution, tools related to a specific area, such as COVID, uh, rare diseases, and it can just be your favorite tools. It can be just uh, like to create, to add, create a domain with my favorite tools. And, uh, and uh, yeah, the point of it is that you start searching and exploring things within a smaller subset. And uh, if these, uh, if these uh, domains are so associated with uh, some efforts in the research community, then they can become quite strong and they, become, they can become quite representative, uh, in, uh, as we'll see for the, for the communities. 
and each time you you create one of those domains you get a domain link in in biotools so I'll, I'll show you that in a few seconds so you can get to these biotools slash domains or via our menu and then you can search within i mean now we have a few dozens and you can search for, for these domains in biotools and see if anything is of interest and of course you can create your own here is an example of the the COVID domain that has uh, over 200 tools that are related in some way to to COVID. And uh, yeah, the domain looks quite a lot like just a list of tools, like if, uh, but with this uh, panel at the top with some description, it can be accessed at one of these. So the, the name of your domain will be, be the actual prefix in, in our URL. So in this case, it's called COVID-19 and you can access it at COVID-19.bio.tools. And uh, in this case, we show 206 tools and you can perform the same searches as you did before, except you're starting with a smaller subset. Uh, the last way is quite, it's related to, to this one is uh, it, it, you can find tools via BioTools communities. Um, so the point here is that uh, the tools expert uh, usually come from, from, this, from the scientific communities. They are the ones who know most about uh, about the tools and uh, they know and drive what is the state of the art of the research and they are the ones who can uh, answer questions like yeah what are the current tools used by a specific community in a specific area uh, what, 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 yeah what is the standard here um, then uh, are those tools in bio tools if not it would be good that they should be um, and then in connection to the community, does BioTools and EDAM, do BioTools and EDAM offer the necessary context, the necessary information for the communities to describe their tools in, in a good way, in a complete way? And then uh, maybe if a person from a specific community can explore BioTools and see, and see that there are tools that they don't know about, maybe they've been recently published, and uh, perhaps they can uh, look at those tools and find that they're quite useful and then integrate them in their, in their, uh, in their analysis pipeline and perhaps they might become part of the standard of the community. Uh, yes, yeah, so we, 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 we try to encourage communities to, to create such lists of tools via our uh, domains mentioned before. And uh, in this way, it would be these tools would be would represent sort of an endorsed list of uh, of tools, and then it would give them a bit more weight, so that someone else who doesn't know what to use, they can say, well, okay, this community suggests that we use these tools, so then okay, maybe this is the place I should start, and then later on we'll see if there are others that are better. Uh, currently in the BioTools communities pages, we only have Elixir communities, but we're open to any other communities to, to present here. And each of these Elixir communities uh, has some of the, has created some of these uh, BioTools domains, these BioTools uh, uh, list of tools. And uh, uh, we're in contact with some of them, not all Elixir communities, but uh, yeah, hopefully after the Last week or two weeks ago, this last uh, all hands, uh, we've had the connections with others, and hopefully we'll get to integrate them in, in bio tools. And yeah, it's 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 quite an effort, of course, for the community to find the tools or uh, that that or not just find, but see what are the tools that they use among the community, and then look are the are those tools in bio tools, uh, and then look at EDAM. Does EDAM contain the necessary information, the necessary concepts to describe everything? And uh, if not, if the answer is no to any of these questions, there's quite a lot of work to be done. And Matush has so, shown uh, examples of work for bioimaging and other communities. So yes, these are the four ways of uh, finding things in BioTools. I don't know if I have time. I, uh, if I don't have, please uh, uh, let me know. Um, I'm showing here an example or a way of how to contribute to bio tools. You can add tools, you can claim ownership of tools. This is quite an important uh, point here. If we would like, in an ideal world, we would like to have the users or the researchers who have contributed to that to, to a specific tool, that maybe the developers or the, the group leaders or 
yeah, in any way they've contributed to the tools that we would like them to be the, the owners of, of, of specific tools rather than uh, someone else who just added it randomly. And this I have to mention, anyone can add any tool uh, in BioTools. It doesn't have to be your own tool. We can add a tool that you find that is useful. You can just add it to BioTools. And uh, hopefully uh, the, the owners will, will find it in BioTools and, and request uh, ownership. And anyone can uh, request edit rights and change some of these specific tools. If they see they're not annotated quite uh, well, they can improve the annotations, uh, fix broken links or any kinds of issues. Anyone can create a domain. Uh, you can't really create a community directly from the website. You need to talk to us, but of course this is possible. We can contribute to our code, to our documentation. If, if anything, you can just uh, write us an uh, email and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do together. Uh, and uh, after this, I'll just show a little bit, a quite quick uh, tutorials on how to add a tool to buy a tools. Um, this will be, just a few slides on how things are, are done currently. So of course you, you would need an account, but this is quite easy to, to make. You just need a username and address. We don't ask of anything else. Just sign up and then you, you, you go to our menu and you add your tool. And you, you, again, you don't have to be the creator of the tool, just to also make sure that the tool is, isn't already in bio tools. We, won't, we wouldn't want to have uh, duplicates. And, uh, when you're adding a tool, only four fields are required. So I'm showing here an example from the screenshot. The tool is presented in these tabs. There are different tool properties, among which this first one is called summary. And only these four main ones are the, the required ones. So if you type in the name, automatically would get a URL safe ID. So you don't even have to type the ID. So it's actually three out of four that you need, that you need to type. And then some uh, description here and then uh, URL and that's it. You can click save and then you can leave the page. Although again, we would want you to add a little bit more. And these question mark here show that you can click and for each of these, you can get to the creation guidelines or to the specific creation guidelines at the top. Uh, other examples of uh, properties are uh, tool types here. So command line tool, web application, you can add as many as you want. And then these are topics related to EDAM, operating system. Here we just added Linux maturity, license. There's a list of licenses that we have. And we're adding things to this as we go. It's from the SPDX license list. Uh, there's a cost, accessibility. I think, I mean, for me, hopefully, for most people, these are quite intuitive, but if not, again, one can click on these uh, on these question marks and go and, and, and check out more information about them. Uh, there are all, all sorts of links in BioTools uh, here at the top. So there's general links, links related to download and to documentation. Usually it's a link and a link type. So in this case, it's a link type of repository that points to a specific uh, GitHub uh, repo. There's a documentation links that in this case is just the API documentation that points to this read the docs link. Uh, if a tool is published, then uh, one can add the publication ID here. We, we, we allow any of these three to be added. We can add just one of them or all of them. So in this case, we show a, a pub, a three different or three different IDs, different types of IDs for the same publication. One is DOI, one is the PubMed ID, and the other one is a PubMed Central. There can be a publication type if the tool is, uh, if the publication is about the tool or is it some sort of uh, benchmark of the tool or usage or any sort of uh, other, other type of publication that is not about the, the tool itself. Um, and uh, yeah, the final example is uh, the screenshot is about uh, yeah, errors in here. So if, if something is not right, uh you would get things in red everywhere so uh, in this case you would have like okay if, if you have some weird characters you would you would get a message for each of these uh for each of these uh, properties the description here is too short things are required just of these four and there is apparently a problem here in the download that you can also go and fix and everything else would show up in this json representation of the tool in the end the tool will be in a json format that will go to the API and uh, uh, 
will be stored or processed on in, in the BioTools backend. We also have support for XML and YAML, if that's something that you like. But by default, we, we use JSON. Um, and uh, coming back to the ownership request on, on the and edit rights at, at the bottom of each of these tools cards, uh, based given based on your user if, and the fact that you're logged in or not, you can you will have option here to request the uh, edit rights and ownership. Anyone can request edit rights. Usually, the, these I, I get these requests and other people. And uh, by default, I just say yes to all of the edit rights unless you have some weird email that yeah then then it might be questionable but otherwise anyone can request edit rights and usually they will get them and ownership added here in a different color because ownership it would be you you would request it if you were in some way the actual owner and you would in, you are in some way related to to the creation or the maintain maintenance of, of the tool currently um and the final thing i would like to talk about is the elixir tools platform ecosystem um this is related to the Elixir services provided within the tools platform. So as you can see here, there are uh, a number of services uh, provided. So if you, you can see this as a, some sort of uh, workflow or pipeline, you can find tools or workflows using the BioTools registry or the workflow hub registry. Then the next step would be to evaluate maybe your tool using the open eBench portal. Uh, you can deploy your, your tools, your code using Bioconda and Biocontainers, and you can run things in, uh, in, in, a, in a Galaxy instance, for example. And uh, all of these components currently of the Elixir tools platform are, they have some connection or some integration, but uh, it's, we're not there yet. We're, we're currently constructing this, uh, this tools ecosystem, and it's a GitHub centric in which we are trying to share and integrate our metadata uh, and exchange within the, the different services. And in this way, we would, uh, we would have a, a more centralized place that integrates, in which every component integrates with each other. And in the end, this will, will provide a much easier, a much more useful experience for the end user as well. So imagine if you're in BioTools on a tool card somewhere, here and then maybe you have a button that says run this tool in a container or download the container or start this tool in, in galaxy or see if uh, if this tool is part of any workflows and from the other way around of course from workflows maybe view some more information about the tool look at the benchmarking information how this tool performs compared to other tools of the same type and so on and so on so this is what we're trying to achieve via this uh, github ecosystem and i won't go into many details here but the point is that we have these uh, services in the ecosystem uh, that come from uh, elixir but of course we we accept other other contributors here either as a consumers of the ecosystem or as producers of the ecosystem um, uh, of course we, we encourage and we we greatly welcome curators to to join and uh, any other sort of contributions criticism and and so on uh, are are welcome for any of these uh, things that were presented today and uh, if i'm not wrong this is the next to now okay there's one more slide about the links of BioTools and EDAM, the APIs, documentation, curation guidelines, contact emails, and uh, GitHub uh, issues pages, and uh, for both BioTools and, and EDAM. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Matos, as well. And uh, I think we're open for questions. Yes, thank you very much, Hans and um, it Thanks for sharing that with us. It seems like that combination of EDAM and that tagging with BioTools is it creates this really powerful way of being able to both represent and discover tools that people need in the right context as well. And there have been a couple of questions that have come through while you were talking. The first question is for Matush, and the question is, with respect to EDAM, are the non-biological items and concepts, for example, the format and the sub-concepts within that, aligned with other ontologies from other disciplines? 
Yes, thank you for that question. Um, so in, in general, the concepts uh, in EDAM are aligned with other ontologies. So that would be the short answer. Um, that is done in different ways, uh, usually with some links to other ontologies or other resources. Uh, there are quite useful links are for human readers, which are uh, see also links to Wikipedia articles, for example. Um, but then there are links to we are adding links to Wikidata now, and so so that would be the way to to align with the, most of other things. Um, specifically talking about other disciplines outside of of biosciences, it is a little bit difficult um, as the the level of maturity when it comes to ontologies and infrastructure is very different between different disciplines. So of course they have their ontologies, but um, I haven't seen that any other discipline would really have an ontology for describing software tools for the scientific domains. So that um, that would be hard to, to, to link with that if it's not in place, but I mean, if the formats are well defined and parts of some standards in other domains, then we, we link to those from EDAM. So it is aligned would be the short answer, I would say. Thank you. So the second question that we've had through is uh, to do with sustainability of biotools. The question was really relating to Elixir. So I'm going to start by summarizing a little what Elixir is. So Elixir is an intergovernmental organization in Europe that was set up with the specific goal of supporting life science research infrastructure like biotools, like Ensemble, like Uniprot, lots of those different databases and, and resources that we're all quite familiar with. Um, it has a kind of interesting funding model where the member states of Elixir will put in some funding and then collectively as a group, Elixir can apply for funding, say, from the European Union or from NIH as well. Uh, and that is the kind of the fantastic part of Elixir, which makes these resources available not only to people across Europe, but also across the world. The question that I'm now getting to, though, is more to do specifically with bio tools, and hence you might be able to answer this. What is the kind of sustainability plan for biotools itself? And if Elixir went away, hopefully it won't, what might happen to biotools? Well, yeah, it's thank you. And it's kind of related to what you, you mentioned here. So of course, uh, we don't expect Elixir to go away anytime soon. Uh, but of course, as you mentioned, uh, as part of the elix elixir, there are countries and nodes that uh, that uh, contribute. It's, I see it kind of like a mini European Union that is related to 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 infrastructure. And uh, currently, BioTools is uh, is uh, mainly maintained by in the in the elixir Danish node. So by the by the Danish universities and the research institutes. Of course, in collaboration with other Elixir nodes, such as Elixir France, Elixir Norway, Elixir Spain, and so on. So I would say that suppose Elixir goes away for whatever reason, I would say as long as there's interest in um, and use, as long as the registry is useful, I would say the well, some one of these countries, uh, other Denmark or a combination of them. They will, they will, they will maintain it. It's, it's not. I, I'm not sure. It's not that expensive to maintain currently. I mean, I, I would like to have maybe a bit more uh, help with the registry, but uh, it wouldn't be uh, so expensive. And I, I would say that at some point, maybe the development of the interfaces and of the of the functionality will probably not be as as uh, extensive as it is right now, it, we would reach some sort of point in which things would be okay. And then I think the the long term the long term uh, problem is to keep having to keep uh, entries alive and to have quality things as they come. So I would see that the content would would only would grow and the, the annotations would need to get better and better. And that 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 is where the problem is. And of course. We would like to 
we'd like to would like to have help from the community but as a as an official more official uh, uh, circumstances i think uh, as as far as uh, as long as there's usage as long as there's interest in the registry i don't think it's going to go anywhere uh, away anytime soon either from elixir or from the national nodes that will uh, want to support it that's wonderful Hopefully that answers the question yes it does that's wonderful news to hear that biotools is sticking around for a while and of course we're working here in australian biocommons to help the australian community get their tools into biotools as well so that they are they are more discoverable and citable too yes and this way you're creating interest right so uh, and uh, yeah you're you're putting it out there that this uh, registry and this ontology is useful so they're, they're useful so maybe other people will get uh, interested and in, yeah again keeping things alive like that Yes, so on that happy note of things staying around for quite a while, we are going to have to leave it there for today. Thank you so much again to Hans and Matus for coming along today and telling us all about how EDAM and BioTools are combining to make this amazing resource. Uh, this is part of our regular offering of webinars and workshops. You can find out more about what's coming up soon by going to our website, and you can catch up on past events on our YouTube channel as well. Otherwise, you can keep in touch with us on Twitter, where Oz via Commons, or you can subscribe to our newsletter as well. So thank you once again to our speakers, and thank you to all of you for joining us as well. As we leave, I'd like to acknowledge that Australian via Commons is enabled by ANCRIS via Bioplatforms Australia funding. Thanks again for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye for now.